Sculpting Nikola Tesla using contour soft sulfur free clay. Now in today's project I'm going to show you how I use the contour soft to create a life-size portrait bust of Nikola Tesla over a foam armature making the entire project much lighter and easier to handle using a clay that is also lighter now besides showing you some tips and tricks on the sculpt itself we're going to go over the benefits of using something like the contour clay on a life-size piece like this some of the benefits include the blending and feathering of the material on the sculpt which makes it a lot easier to work with it is a sulfur free clay which makes it silicone friendly particularly platinum silicone its gray color gives us great contrast to seeing what we're actually working on as well as the soft feel of the material in your hand makes it a lot easier to apply and work with beyond that the material is solvent friendly so we can finish and clean up the sculpt with solvents as well as heat resistant so we don't have to worry about it deforming once we create our original sculpt. Now let's just jump into this project and see how it's done. Here's a helpful tip. Whenever you have leftover silicone material in the mixing buckets, don't throw it out. Let it cure in the bucket on the bottom and once it's fully cured you can peel it out and create these silicone patties or trays and I use them here as a tray for my clays that I put in the warming oven. That way the clay even warmed or even if it melts somewhat is not going to drip over everything and leave a mess but keep it nice clean and tidy. The warming oven is now turned on to 135 Fahrenheit and the contour is allowed to warm up until it's soft and pliable. This process takes about 60 minutes. If you take a look at the technical bulletin you will find the information for the warming of the material if you want it to be just soft or if you want it to be throwable there is different temperatures that are outlined in the technical bulletin. To start our project we first need an armature and this is a very standard basic armature for a head sculpt. So we're going to screw this to our working surface, a working board. And notice that there is a wire frame up top so that's going to be maneuverable. And then we're going to build up a foam armature on top of uh, that wooden structure. Uh, this foam armature is going to take up a lot of space that we usually would have to build up with clay. This is regular insulation foam that you can get at any home renovation store. Using a reciprocating saw, I can now shape the main area of our sculpt, the human chest area, to our liking based on the photograph that we're working from. This is going to save us a lot of material that we need to apply. And uh, here you can see even the headspace is being filled in with the foam to take up uh, space where we usually have to build up clay. Before we start our sculpt, just to get familiar with where we want to go, here's a picture of Nikola Tesla that we will be recreating in a three-dimensional sculpture. The clay has softened from sitting in the warming oven and is now easily now spread over the foam armature and sticks to the armature very well. And then I'm going to cover the entire foam structure with a half an inch layer of clay, including the head. So everything gets covered with a layer of clay so we have a nice solid base to work off of. And just once again here, I wanted to emphasize how easy it is to manipulate the clay onto the armature, the foam armature, as well onto the existing clay itself. It blends and feathers very easily by having the material uh, in a warmed up state. Now it has been several hours since we applied the clay to our armature and the softened clay that was warmed up has now cooled and uh, referred back to its original hardness. Now in order to turn the head into a position that we need it to be we do need to heat up some of that clay again and for that I will be using a heat gun. 
Um, it's really important to think ahead when you're constructing these armatures. If you want the head to be maneuverable, you have to make sure that um, the frame itself underneath is maneuverable as well. Now that we have a layer of material over the entire armature, it's time to start roughing out the details and building up a rough draft of the entire sculpt. As you can see here, I'm continuously adding on material onto already uh, cool down material. So the material itself sticks very well to itself. Now I'm just jumping a little further into the sculpt and I'm still roughing out the basic shape of the face. As you can see, there's still a lot more material that we need to apply. And here again, you can see how easy the material just sticks to itself. I simply roll out a little bit of clay and then uh, squeeze it onto the already uh, existing material, already cool down material, and it sticks very well. Now we're a little further into the sculpt and I have refined some of those details and began using uh, more of the sculpting tools to remove some of the clay that was previously applied. Keep in mind that the procedure of sculpting in clay is a lot of times a process of adding and subtracting. Because I cannot focus on one area, I'm going to skip back to working on the front, on the eyes. And here you can see that uh, sculpting tools, metal sculpting tools, work very well on the contour clay. I can easily manipulate the clay once it's cooled down and get clean, crisp edges with sculpting tools. Using raking tools, I continue to remove the clay from our sculpt and work down those high spots and refine the area in general, trying to smooth out and get it to a finalized state. Keep in mind that the clay cools down quite rapidly and the material can be worked on with sculpting tools in as little as 30 minutes from the initial application of warmed up clay. As the sculpt is nearing its final stages of detail work, I am finding areas that are just not complete and not satisfactory. Here you can see that I'm adding large amounts of the clay to already cool down material very easily and it feathers out quite nicely into the already uh, applied material. So even down the line further in the sculpt, it's very easy to add and subtract the material as you find a need to. Now we're going to move to the back of the sculpt itself. Here I'm going to be adding some uh, of the inventions that Tesla did. I'm going to start out by sketching out the alternating current motor, the first alternating current motor that he created. And then we're jumping to the base. We're going to give it a nice clean crisp base and also a name plaque is uh, being sculpted in here. So you can see again how quickly the clay goes from being uh, soft and pliable to cooling down and being sculpted into uh, with sculpting tools and keeping a nice sharp profile. We're going to clean up the entire back area to get a nice smooth surface to work on. And then we're going to focus on adding some of the detail and to the building here that we're building up. Now you can notice that I'm using different tools as I'm working on my sculpture here. And sometimes I use simple wooden sticks that I shape with a razor knife to the size and shape that I need. Also some of my metal tools I will reshape and grind down to get a very fine tip or shape that I need for a specific work area. And you can see that the clay itself uh, keeps the shape very well once it cools down so you can easily carve into it and sculpt it. But you can also apply it easily once it's in the um, soft state. So that's why I keep the warming oven always on with some clay in there in case I need some material that is 
uh, soft and ready to go and apply easily, I, I can always draw from that pile of clay. So here again, you can see I'm adding to the lower sculpt, to the motor. I add some material and then within a few minutes I'm already sculpting into it. So the clay again cools down very fast and it's very easy to work with the sculpting tools on. So here I'm using just a rake tool to kind of get the general shape chiseled out. Now to add some detail the back of the sculpt here, this is the Tesla Tower. I simply rolled out some clay in a very thin profile. This is about two millimeters, sixteenth of an inch, and then cut it using a razor blade. And once it was cut to lengths, I simply applied it to the sculpt and pressed it lightly to bond it to the already uh, existing sculpted clay. Here we're gonna add some more detail to the front. We're gonna uh, cut out the name of the uh, famous inventor. So again, I rolled out some clay and the specific thickness, and then I cut out the lettering that we're then adding to the front to the nameplate. Once the lettering is cut to size, I can lay them into position and press them lightly just enough so they adhere temporarily make sure that the spacing is correct and then once i'm uh, happy with the spacing you can uh, firmly press them down and clean up around the edges using a sculpting tool and here i can just uh, chisel out some of the material uh, using one of the rough chiseling tools scraping tools and um, I'm not going to refine this area too much. We're going to leave it in a rough state so it doesn't take away from the rest of the sculpture. As you may remember, I mentioned that this material is solvent friendly and to soften up the look and feel of the sculpt, we're going to treat it with a mix of two parts isopropyl alcohol and one part acetone mixed together. This combination of the solvents will soften the outer layer of the clay, allowing us to run a soft bristle brush and soften the overall texture. This will get rid of any shiny spots in the clay, as well as any fingerprints that we may have left in the sculpting process. Now that our project is finished, the uh, portrait bust of Tesla here is complete. We wanted to give it a quick look over, make sure that there is no imperfections that we don't want in the sculpt because the uh, imperfections will then be copied into the mold that we will be making and will eventually make it into the castings, which we want to avoid. Now, I did really enjoy working with this material. The contour soft felt really good in my hands. Um, by heating up the material, it felt uh, like wet clay almost, very easy and natural to work with. And once it firmed up to room temperature, uh, it was really easy to get detail into the material and shape it to my liking. So, and there you have it, a step-by-step -step procedure that I used using the contour clay soft to create this portrait bust off Nikola Tesla and capture a lot of detail at the same time. Now, let's just take a look at our project. We're able to show you a couple of tips and tricks on how we created this bust here. We also uh, showed you why we would choose a product like contour clay soft to create a bust like this. The material itself blends and feathers easily it's sulfur free, which makes it silicone friendly, particularly platinum silicones. It's gray color is great for contrast when working and sculpting. And it's soft hand feel when handling the material is great in the sculptor's hands. Furthermore, it is solvent friendly and heat resistant. Now, if you have an idea about what we should do next, please let us know down in the comments below. And if you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. Keep up with our latest mold making, casting, sculpting, and other videos. Remember to subscribe.